Good morning. Old Grandpa Woodstone here. It's getting to be that time of the year when um, Grandpa starts thinking of, of elves and fairies and uh, Christmas, Christmas time, Yule time, a wonderland. And uh, I've got a story that uh, comes from um, uh, Scandinavia, and it's called Christmas Winterland. And it's written by uh, uh, Wilhelm Hansen. And uh, let me start off by by simply reading the, uh, the kind of the preamble or the what is this book all about? Far to the north, where the snow is deep and soft on the ground all winter, live the little creatures called the gnomes. Not many people have seen the gnomes because as soon as a gnome feels a human close by, he or she disappears so fast that you don't even see the shadow of their hat. There are different kinds of gnomes. The farm gnomes prefer to live in the old attic, and they protect the farmer and his family against evil. And then there are the forest gnomes, who dress in gray wool jackets and red hats, and they live in the big forest, perhaps under a fir tree or in a cave. They sleep all summer, but as soon as Christmas gets near, they wake up, and then things begin to happen. The youngest gnomes, who love pranks, get into all sorts of mischief, like hiding your shoes or your socks on a cold winter morning. Sometimes they can be very kind, and if you find a small present under your pillow, you can be sure it was a gnome who left it for you. In the month of Christmas, the gnomes are very busy making Christmas presents and preparing the Christmas feast. We don't get to see the gnomes, but the animals do. and They help them be gnomes as much as they can. And if they have any time left over, they play together with each other. If you want to know more about the gnomes and what they do at Christmas time, Wilhelm Hansen tells us, just turn the page. The Christmas month has started. Old Father Gnome pokes his head through the branches and shouts, Happy Christmas! Come along with me to the land of the gnomes, and let's have lots of fun. The gnomes have their own postal service. Little mice make sure that all the cards and the packages are delivered. One mouse is responsible for the airmail, but it isn't very smart to have a snail in charge of express mail, is it? These poor little mice. The big cat has gone to sleep on top of all the packages, and what do you do? Do you think would happen if they try to wake him up? So here's uh, here's Father Gnome. Oops. <laughs> here's Father Gnome, and then there's the picture of all the the postal service. Kind of an interesting, interesting thing. Let's see what happens. The gnomes are very clever at making Christmas presents. This year, the children will be really surprised, says Father Gnome, while he paints a rocking horse. Those two children peeping through the window, though, they won't be very surprised, will they? Some of the gnomes are getting ready to go into town to give the ch city children a Christmas treat. They fix up an old airplane. It looks if that big fat pig will have to stay at home. Otherwise, <laughs> the plane won't get off the ground. So there they are. <laughs> See the pig? At Christmas time, we sing Christmas carols. The gnomes do too. And they also play the fiddle. The fiddle is out of tune and the gnomes try to tune it using a pair of pliers and an oil can. 
maybe kicking the wood with clogs might help too. Looks like uh, the mice uh, either are, are not enjoying the sound or they're very much thinking it's funny. Where are the gnomes? Well, they're at the Christmas market. Why else? They, bu they love buying and selling and instead of money they pay with laughter and giggles and kindness. Just look at what you can buy in the market. Hand-knitted socks, jumping jacks, Christmas decorations, newly laid eggs, clogs, and of course, beautiful, beautiful Christmas trees. Out in the forest, the snow is thick and soft. The animals can't always find food for themselves. The gnomes try to help their animal friends, so they bring lots of food. A sheep of corn for the birds, carrots for the hares or rabbits, turnips for the deer, and of course, nuts for the squirrels. And who do you think the sausages are for that they brought? Probably for the fox. And maybe one or two for the gnomes. <laughs> the gnomes think that uh, it must be cold to be a snowman. Here, they say, have a nice cup of hot tea. Oh dear. That simply wasn't a very good idea, was it? Ice cream would have been much better. And the poor snowman is melting away. <laughs> it's quite an adventure. Where are the gnomes going? They all look so busy and excited. Are they going to the grand Christmas ball in the barn? Oh, they're going by wheelbarrow and sled and piggyback. <laughs> uh, some pigs are slipping on the ice and some are, some of the uh, gnomes are using stilts and one is riding a, a goose and there's even a squirrel on the back of a, of a rabbit. They might get there first. Yes, that's exactly where they're going. The gnome band is playing happy tunes to invite everyone to come and dance and be happy. It's a bit uncomfortable to be in the way when the big fat pigs all fall over. But they've got a drum and a fiddle and a, a squeeze box. Everyone looks there like they're having a really good time. The gnomes love to dance. Just watch them ice dancing. Clogs, however, are no good on the ice. And did the eggs, which were going to be used for the Christmas baking, all break? The gnome that's uh, carrying the eggs, he's falling down on the ice. But many of the, of the gnomes are doing quite well on the ice. The gnomes need flour for Christmas baking. The miller gnome has milled the flour and the gnomes take it home on a sled followed by the animals who know what the flour is for. They're looking forward to tasting the cookies. I am too. The gnome children, like all other children, like to get Christmas presents. They have written a list so long that Grandfather fell asleep trying to read it. How long is your list? These gnomes are trying to count the birds in the tree. They can't remember all the names of the birds. How many names do you know of birds? It's a blackbird, a bluebird, a cardinal. How many names do you know? How many, can you count the names? How many names can you count as the gnomes try to count the birds in the tree. Mother is playing, Mother Gnome is playing the piano. The trouble is that she bangs too hard on the keyboard and the piano falls to pieces. The flower vase falls on the head of one of the children. Poor Father Gnome thought he was going to have a quiet time with his newspaper and pipe. It's never quiet at Christmas time. Not at the Gnome house or or your house either, I suspect. It is time for the Christmas circus. Some of the gnomes perform tricks and 
the rest look on. All the performers are very, very clever, particularly the pig, who can balance on one front leg. Clever pig. The mice would like to give the gnomes a, a surprise, and they're making Christmas decorations, <coughs> hearts and little baskets. <coughs> Pardon me. The marzipan pig has a big red ribbon tied around it, and one little mouse can't resist taking a nibble. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Whoa, I gotta figure it out. There we go. You see it? All the gnomes like, they love, actually, rice pudding. But it's not a good idea to fall asleep when you're cooking it. I wonder what Mother Gnome is dreaming about while the rice pudding is spoiling all over the kitchen. The pig, the goose, the cat, the mouse, all hope that Mother Gnome will sleep for a long, long time because the rice pudding tastes so good. <laughs> now that the rice pudding is ready, there's plenty for everyone. The animals love it. Before the gnomes can celebrate their own Christmas, party. They, they give a party for the animals in the forest. They decorate the prettiest tree they can find, and the animals all dance around it. The fox, the deer, the owl, the cat, the squirrel, birds, they're all there. The rabbits, they're all there. And then they have jelly donuts to eat, and at last, they all have Christmas presents. The gnomes found a beautiful fir tree for their own Christmas tree. The snow is falling just as it should be on Christmas Day. At long last, it is really Christmas. The Christmas star shines brightly in the sky. They all hurry home for an old-fashioned gnome Christmas. The ringing of the church bells can be heard all over the village. The gnomes are sitting on the roof of the church singing, but the people inside can't hear them. The kind par farmer has put out a bowl of rice pudding up in the attic with wooden spoons for the gnomes. In the mi middle of the rice pudding, he has put a big lump of butter. This is the gnomes' favorite dish, but only on Christmas Eve do they have butter on their rice pudding. When they have finished eating, they hear a merry bell inside. They all know that the Gnome King has arrived. At the back of his sled, little gnomes are tossing out presents for gnomes and animals alike. The Gnome King doesn't have time to stay. He still has a long ways to go before all the gnomes and all the animals have their present. And now, Christmas is over. The gnomes go home. They will sleep until the month of Christmas next year. Sometimes it does happen that a little gnome wakes up and feels like having a bit of fun. So don't be surprised if your hat flies off when there is no wind blowing. That might be a little gnome playing a trick on you. But mostly, gnomes sleep and dream about next Christmas. Christmas Wonderland. Well, that was a fun story, and Grandpa Woodstone will try to read stories and record them more and more often. Bye-bye.